Moving on with the customized PLC modules that we've looked at already in previous videos, let's have a look now at the terminal list and the settings for that customized PLC that we put into the database earlier. Now, again, I've created a separate drawing, so we'll add that to the project and add the active drawing. And again, I can't stress how important this is. Make sure that obviously things are linked to the database. So I'll change the drawing properties there to 008. And we'll do a quick refresh once that's updated so that there's 008 there. Now I'm going to go back right over here, schematic tab and over here, and then click on this little fly out here and go to our PLC database file editor. Now there's my AWA that I created earlier, and it's got eight pins here, eight terminal types. So if I go here now and scroll up on the list, I'm going to go for a standard input point wire left and then the next one down i'm going to scroll up again and i now want the right so there you go output input output point wire right and i'm just going to keep doing this as i work there you go left again like so now make sure you get the right one i've made a mess of that there so what we do is we just make sure that we click on the right one each time it's very easy to miss these so take your time be methodical it's so easy to click on the wrong one there you go i've done that again See what I mean? It's very, very easy to get this wrong. And that's the last thing you want when you're inserting a parametric PLC. So be methodical. Make sure you click on the right item that you need from the list. So I'm going to work my way down the list, taking my time. So there's the left one there. And again, I've got eight to consider here. So imagine if you had 24. It's even more long-winded. This is great if you've got a custom PLC that you need. It takes a bit of time to do. But it's done, and once it's done once, that's it. It's completely done. You don't have to do it again. So there's our information. I've got eight terminal types, left, right, left, right, all the way down the list. I'm going to show them always in my customized PLC module. I'm not going to worry about optional reprompt, break after, or spacing factor. Let's have a look at what else we've got here. We've got module specifications. So let's go there first. And we've got custom PLC. Now what I'm going to do there, I'm going to change that slightly. I'm going to change it to AB underscore, and it's a 1761, and then underscore again, and it's an L16, and then an underscore again, and I'm going to call it custom. So I know it's a custom PLC module. Now the module type might also be custom one, let's say. You can go in and put all of this information in. Again, I don't know which AutoCAD block to insert. I don't know which auto lisp file to run because I haven't actually set those up. All I'm doing here is showing you the ability and how to do these things. So if we OK that now, that's done. And what we can do is we can now go over to our style box dimensions here. I'm going to select a graphic style of two. I like those little screw head connectors like that. And I'm going to set it with English dimensions and leave all of those as defaults and OK that. So that's all set up. Check your settings as well. So make sure your settings are doing what you want them to do. So there's your terminal block settings here. So there's all your different terminal block settings that you can use. Now, I'm not going to go into all the detail here. We could go on forever doing this. But you would go in there and work through your terminal blocks and make sure you've got the right style. I like that style there. And you'd make sure that you use that block file name. So can you see each of these little blocks here has a block file name that you can add to your PLC module? I'll just OK that now. Now, it says it's been modified. Do I want to save it before continuing? Yes, I do. So that will save that data. So if I go to the AWA, it's all saved. You can see I don't have to click on Save Module because it knows it's got the current details. So I'm going to click on Done and Insert. There's my AWA. There's the type. Can you see that? Type Custom 1, AWA, AB1761L16 Custom. And there's my graphic style there. I can select a type. It's made the parametric PLC module for me again. I click on OK and I bring it in and there it is there. But this is where it gets clever. See the X there? That's the insert point for the parametric module. Click. I'll do a spacing of say one and I'll OK that. Confirm it again by clicking OK again. And now it's asking me for a beginning address. So I'll just pick the one at the top of the list and off it goes. It's not the most perfect PLC module in the world, but if I zoom in there now, there you go, Alan Bradley, AWA, PLC. If I click on that now and right click, I can go and edit my component. 
And the nice thing is, look, there's all my input output connectors. I can give each one a description. So if I select zero, zero, and say that that is my power input, for example, and I now OK that, if I just zoom out now, look, there's my power input. It's not a perfect PLC, you'll notice. You can see there, look, things are on top of each other, blocks are on top of text. And I would obviously go in and rectify that by fine tuning it and tidying it up. But you can see how quick and easy it is to generate your own PLC module, add your own terminal list, add your own settings to make sure that you've got your own customized one which might be needed for your project.